to today as to when that exciting thing is going to happen. And right now my cat is busy having a little bit of a moment because I left her alone this morning. Heaven forbid. Anyway, so we're going to start with photoelectric effect. Like I said, it's a really nice section. And when we get started with it, there's two parts to photoelectric effect, effect in the ask you. Okay. So there's going to be the questions where they're going to um, give you straight theory explanation questions, and they are all the same. And then there's the calculation. With the calculations of which we will do, you just need to be careful about reading the question properly to make sure you know what they're asking you, because that's sometimes where the wheel is for okay? Probably later today or first thing tomorrow morning, I will put the worksheet in for the photoelectric effect. I'm busy adding a couple of extra questions in there, so don't stress about that. Okay, so my cat has now made everything that was on my desk except my computer go everywhere, but it's all right, we're good, and scared herself. Moving on. So let's get started. Okay, so here we no, that's there we go. So we're looking at the photoelectric effect. What's wrong, Benedict? You got get. I don't know what that means. So just a little bit of reminding of what you've learned before all right so we've dealt with transverse waves before okay remember frequency is the number of complete waves that pass a point all right and it's measured in hertz frequency is incredibly important in this section because frequency comes from the source okay wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points that are in phase are we done? Yes, Isabella, we're done. What's wrong, Isabella? What are you confused with? Because if, are you confused with topics? If it is, then maybe you can Matt, private message Matt, me and we can have a chat. Matt, there okay, you are, wait, Isabella, is this, yes. Okay, is this a whole new section? Whole new section. Okay, thank you. Okay. Is that what you were confused about? Yes, um, I don't know if it was a whole new section or if it was still like... On the no, side. no, it's a whole new section. Um, it looks a little like we're doing Doppler still because we've got frequency and wavelength and all the rest of it, but it's actually a whole new section. These terms are important okay. for the section. Thank you feel better? Yes, thank you. You're welcome, sweetie. I know this all gets very... <laughs> Sorry. She's going to get sprayed soon. Anyway, so wavelength, points between two waves, that, uh, between two points on a wave that are in phase. When we spoke about frequency and wavelength in Doppler, you remembered that if the fre frequency, well, if the wavelength got smaller, the frequency got higher. Okay, that's quite important that they sort of like the inverse of each other. What's important as well, which we're going to come across again, okay, is wave speed, which is the product of frequency and wavelength, which is this equation. This is what's going to be different here. We're going to use a very special V, okay, in that we're not V, sorry, I'm just spraying my cat now with water. We're not using B as such, we're going to be using C, okay? C is the symbol for the speed of electromagnetic radiation. We sometimes just call it the speed of light, okay? Um, but light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's just one little part of the electromagnetic spectrum. So the photoelectric effect really has to do with a bigger part of the spectrum. We just can see it with the with using visible light. Okay, so we're going to do a couple of questions later on 
So instead of V, I'm going to use C, but C is just a special symbol for V because it's specifically for light. Okay, not for waves in general. So let's go back to the electromagnetic spectrum. Now in grade 10, we taught you the electromagnetic spectrum and you had to learn about the pen how much it can penetrate and you had to know um, what they were used for, what their dangers were. We're not actually concerned about this. What I'm really concerned here with is that particularly here with infrared and ultraviolets between those two points, you know which one has the high frequency and which one has the low frequency. Now you've had you had to know this for Doppler. So this, I think Isabella, this also might be why it feels like it's a little confusing. Because you have to remember that with redshift, it was because the the stars were moving away, the wavelengths increased, which means the frequency got smaller. If you can remember that, it's really going to help you with this section, okay? So if you remember that ultraviolet means that you have smaller waves but much higher frequencies, it's going to make your life a lot easier in this section, okay? So knowing how the frequency and the wavelength changes here will make your life easier, okay? I'm not concerned... Do you, no, not at all, Electra. You don't need to know the wavelengths, not at all. You do not need to know specific values. You do not need, you just need to know the trend, okay? If they want a specific value, they'll either give you one value and you can work them out or they'll tell you, okay? So don't, you just need to know the trend. We're not going to work with, radio waves, and we're absolutely not going to work with gamma rays. You're welcome, Electra, because, you know, they're not, uh, they're not part of what we're do doing really between infrared and ultraviolet, okay? Very important. NB, luckily this is given to you. All electromagnetic waves travel at three times 10 to the eight meters per second in a vacuum. When they reach Air, so when they get to our atmosphere, they slow down so little that we ignore it, okay? We ignore the fact that it slows down, and we will assume that it's 3 times 10 to the 8. It, not, it probably goes to about 2,99, which in the grand scheme of things makes no difference whatsoever. This is a constant, okay? This will not change. This will be given to you on your information sheet. So it's not like sound where the sound changed depending on whether it was a gas, a liquid, or a solid, and depending on temperature, this will not. This is constant. Very important. Okay, so we did last year, very briefly, we touched on diffraction, okay? I think, I can't actually remember, we might not have, it doesn't matter. Diffraction and interference are two properties of light. So, Jed, this is coming back to what you said earlier, that demonstrate that light is a wave nature, okay? So, what I mean by that is, in grade 10, you did interference. You did constructive and destructive interference. Only waves can interfere like that, okay? So are V and C the same, Blaze, for this section? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. For the radiation, yes. The diffraction, easiest way to think of diffraction is if you're driving at night, so you're in a car at night, and you look through the window and you look at a street light, okay? And that street light has a, uh, yes, Blaze, you will always put... That is the constant for the radiation. We're going to get to calculations, okay? So hang tight. We need to explain other things first. And you look through the window and you get that like halo around the light, okay? That halo is because of diffraction. So it's bending of light. Diffraction can only happen with a wave, all right? So in that instance, 
waves are behave uh, no not waves light is behaving like a wave okay it has a wave nature but and this is the issue there have been fights in the scientific community over this little duality for hundreds of years and depending on which scientist was in vogue okay so in other words which scientist had the ear of the royal society in london who dominated all scientific knowledge that would determine whether it was an they thought of light as a wave or whether they thought as light as a particle or whether they thought light was both okay and it's gone backwards and forwards for years and years and years the person who put this to bed was i was isaac not isaac newton what am i talking about way too early was einstein okay was einstein and a man by the name of max planck okay they did separate work put it all together both german scientists and they put the whole thing together and went well actually light is both but now what we need to look at is what makes us think that light is a particle what does it do that makes it that makes us think it's a particle that's the photo effect okay so this is the definition the photoelectric effect is the process that occurs when electromagnetic radiation light between infrared and ultraviolet shines on a metal surface and it ejects electrons from the metal okay so in other words the light hits the metal with enough energy and that energy kicks electrons out this is the process that is used when we consider how a solar panel works this is exactly what they're doing so on a solar panel part of the light that's skin and it's the ultraviolet section of the light comes when it hits the solar panel it's pushing electrons out those electrons can then move through a circuit that creates electricity for us okay so this is where this is coming from all right so metals going back to basic structure of a metal here we have a metal which has our positive cores okay remember those positives are your nuclei so it's the nucleus with the core electrons not the valence electrons the core electrons those core electrons don't move around them is the valence electrons okay and those valence electrons are free to move through the metal now when we go to school i do the, the 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 analogy i have this is a public forum and it's been recorded so i'm not going to give it to you here because next thing that ends up on the internet and i get into trouble um so but the point is this all right and I don't really want my funny voices recorded. Anyway, the point is this. You can think of it as... No, that, that's not going to work. Anyway, so what happens is that I'm the core, okay? So it's almost like, think of it like going from class to class at school. Your teachers and the desks are the core. I'm the positive core, positive energy. And the desks are the core electrons, which don't go anywhere. You guys are the valence electrons. So you move from class to class. So you are free to move as you go along. The bell is the indication that you need to move. So you don't just move randomly. There's a, there's a reason why you have to move. So what we have to do is we have to give these valence electrons energy. That's what we want to do. We want to give them something that's going to allow them to move from one place to another. Okay, they are also called delocalized electrons. They are the valence electrons. Delocalized just means they don't stay in one place. They're free to move. And we actually want them all to move in the same, okay? A little like, think about what it's like at school when everyone's there and you're trying to get from one class to another. And we try to tell you guys at the beginning of the year that, you know, if you're going like walk on the left so people can pass on the right, like you do on the road. And we know it doesn't always happen. 
And it's a nightmare when you're trying to walk down the corridor and somebody's coming at you in the wrong direction. And when you're a little teacher like me, you just have to scream at them and then they move out the way, which is great. But it's horrible. But if everyone did the right thing, we would be fine. Okay. So those delocalized electrons are the outermost electrons. They are free to move, given enough energy. Okay. That gives us an electric current. Now, in a circuit, in an electric circuit, so a circuit where I put a battery in, like, like we did in electricity, that's the applied EMF, okay? We want to do is go, what if I don't apply an EMF? Light can also cause these electrons to move. So light can also make that move. So that's important for us, okay? Now, there has to be enough energy. And this is the photoelectric effect. Not all light can cause electrons to be released from all metals. Okay? Wait, what is the applied EMF? <laughs> Sorry, Electra, let's go back here. Um, Electra, the implied... The applied EMF is like when I put a battery in a normal circuit. So that's a battery, a cell, okay? Or your PowerPoint, your, your electric PowerPoint at home, a plug, okay? So normally we get these delocalized electrons to move by giving it energy through a power source, okay? Hopefully, um. Well, I'm going very fast. I know, guys, you've got to tell me to slow down or I'm just going to get going. I, I like this section. You're welcome, Electra. So, instead of applying an EMF, so instead of using a battery, we can use light. That's what a solar cell does, okay? It's a renewable energy. But here's very important. We have to give the electrons enough energy. What we're doing here is we're not just wanting, see, in a circuit, we get the electrons to go through the wire. With photoelectric effect, we're actually going to get the electrons to leave the metal and go to somewhere else. I'll show you the setup in a second. That, that's what we want. We need the electrons to actually leave, okay? So they have to escape. So I'm going to show you two ways that we can demonstrate the um, photoelectric effect. Your textbook only does the one way, okay? Now, the way your textbook does it is not a way we could do at school because um, we don't have the equipment. The equipment's actually quite expensive we could do it with the gold leaf electroscope so it's one way to do it but once again i don't have all the equipment i could but it's easier to source all right but this is the one way we can do it so we can use a gold leaf electroscope some of you may or may not remember this from grade 10 so this is a basic setup of a gold leaf electroscope okay over here we have a metal disc which can be because then it has electrons in it. Down the bottom, that metal disc is attached here, and then we have a gold leaf. So over there, which I've now done in yellow, that part there is a metal plate with the gold leaf. Now, what that gold leaf is, it's like a very, very, and it's painfully thin piece of, of almost gold foil. So it's like tin foil, but it's very, very thin. If any of you have ever done um, Isabella, you don't have to be able to label it. No, not at all. Um, I think knowing what it looks like will definitely help in terms of the type of questions, but you don't ever have to label it. No, you just have to know how it works. Okay. Um, some of you may have seen gold leaf because it's one of those things. Uh, yes, Electra. Um, let me finish and then you'll see. Okay. I promise, guys, we're going to do questions as well. And and what you're going to see with this is that 
going to ask you the same thing over and over again. Okay. So this gold leaf, very thin. It's gold because it can carry a charge. It's a metal. All right. We use, a gold leaf is now used in paintings. It's used in etchings. It's used in all sorts of things. And if you really have money to waste, apparently you can find it in food and um, apparently a program on this, Harrods in, in England, sells cupcakes where, quite frankly, I'd need to pay you a salary to afford one, but it has gold in it. No, it's ice cream. It wasn't cupcakes. It was ice cream. It had gold leaf in it, and somebody was buying them for their six-year-old. I was like, really? Money to waste. Moving on. So this is what happens, okay? We charge the electroscope. We're not worried about the how the electroscope gets charged. Friction, contact, doesn't matter. But we the electroscope and we negatively charge it. So all these over here, those are excess electrons, okay? And what happens is the gold leaf is now repelled from the metal disc. So the gold leaf stands up. This is important. We've charged it because when I shine light on the electroscope, I want to see what happens to the leaf. If I can get this gold leaf to move, then I've affected the electron. That's where I'm trying to go. So we have a negatively charged electroscope. And the first thing we're looking at is we're using zinc. Zinc is the most common metal they use in this section, mainly because to show it with the section, we need ultraviolet light. So it's a little bit easier to explain. So on top of the, there, over there, that there, that's a zinc plate. There's just a piece of zinc metal that we've put on top, okay? If we shine white light, in fact, if we shine light of any color in the spectrum from red to violet no matter how brightly we shine it this leaf doesn't move okay that is really important so the leaf will not move that means for us that normal white light does nothing to the electrons normal white light white light of any color in the spectrum red to uh, to violet not talking infrared or ultraviolet, okay, visible spectrum, doesn't do anything to the electrons, okay? Intensity, that's brightness, also does nothing. If light was a wave, when we make the light, okay, miss this, what is the leaf? That's this part here, Kaylee. There's the leaf. It's the gold part that's now been charged. So we're looking for this little part to move. I want to see if this moves. Okay. So if light was a wave, okay, if I made that wave very big, so I increased the amplitude and I made it very, very bright, that should if light is a wave, then have enough energy that when it hits the zinc plate, the electrons can come off. Think about if you're in the sea and you're standing there as the waves come along, little waves, we're all fine. We can bounce up and down, not have much energy. Big wave comes along, lots of energy in that big wave because it's a normal transverse wave. We get Get not knocked over, okay? Some of you are probably fine. All right. So this tells me there's something else at play here, okay? Because it's not about the brightness. If I use ultraviolet light, however, what happens is this. Ultraviolet light, no matter how dim it is, okay? Electrons, now I want to change color here. Yeah, let's go red. Electrons from here say, so, oh, I don't like this, and they go away. These electrons now rearrange themselves, and the leaf drops. So we make the electroscope less, 
negative. So ultraviolet comes along, no matter how dim it is, okay, it kicks electrons out. So now you've got to look at this and go, hmm, well, there's something else here, okay? But it's specifically ultraviolet radiation and the leaf falls. So now we know that we can kick the electrons out with a, with a part of light, okay? So watch here. Ultraviolet radiation, here we go, comes, kicks the electrons out, the leaf falls. Those electrons, those ones that come out, are sometimes called photoelectrons. It's just a silly name for them, okay? We call them photoelectrons because they are kicked out by light. They are electrons. They don't change what they are. They still have the exact same makeup as an electron. That is not going to change. It's just a special name for the ones that get kicked out. Okay? If we increase the intensity, in other words, make the light much brighter, the leaf quick. Okay? So now we've got to ask ourselves, what does that mean? Why does it fall quicker? So these are all the things we've got to talk about, okay? It falls quicker because we're able to kick the, the electrons out faster. We're gonna, so a little bit of ultraviolet light has enough energy to kick electrons out. Bright ultraviolet light has the, the electrons come off. They're going to move at exactly the same speed, but more of them are going to come off. Okay, what we need to remember here is ultraviolet radiation has a higher frequency than visible light. Frequency is now important. So it's not about the intensity, otherwise normal white light would have worked. It's about the frequency, okay? At this point, we've got to go, okay, yeah, what does this mean for us? This frequency and the fact that the ultraviolet comes along and kicks the electrons out, this is where they go, well, then maybe light's not a wave but a particle because... What's actually happening here, and I'm going to use, let's change this to, there we go. So over here, when the ultraviolet light hits the electrons, it's like a miniature collision. And if the light has enough energy, it can transfer all its energy to the electron, and the electron will go. The electron will leave. It's the only explanation that we've got that it must be acting a particle, okay? Because we have these collisions between the light and the electrons. Those collisions are resulting in movement of the electrons, okay? So I'm going to show you another demonstration. I wanted to use FET, but for some reason fit for this particular demonstration and i have no idea why and it's very very frustrating so i think you may now be losing i'm gonna have to reshare my screen with while i wait for it to oh look i've been talking to you haven't actually seen me. Great. Hello, Karen. Do you have a question, sweetie? You're a bit lost. Okay. There you go. So, I'm going to share my screen again, okay? And I'm going to show you, I'm going to work through this. We'll probably do it again next time, okay? Okay. Gabby, I will now, I'm going to show you now, hopefully, the, um, the animation will help, help, okay? So, give me one second.
No, that's not what I wanted. Okay, so let's share my screen and go to. Oh, it's slow today. I'll just wait. Patiently. Of course, my mouse has died. Which is possible. No, it's thinking. Okay. I really want to show you this before you go. Um, come on. Really? Are you going to do that? Oh. Okay. We'll, we'll get there now. It's just because it's thinking. Okay. I'll come back to I know you can't see my screen. Maybe it'll let me share it now. Let's close that. Let's close that. Okay. What I'm trying to do now is discard some things, but now I'm looking at the time and I suspect that it just might be easier to call it a day because this really doesn't want me to share the screen with you. My, yeah, okay. So I tell you what, grade 12s, we are, there's five minutes left. Okay, I've now joined on another screen because my team's closed on me and I'm hoping you can all still see me. Okay, um, this is never good. So, grade 12. Because I'm having technical difficulties, surprise, surprise, we will call this a day. Don't sign off just yet for me though. Um, no homework for next time. All right. And yeah, Lauren Rose and Gabby, I know you want me to explain it again and I will, but I'll do it when I see you on Thursday. Okay. Because I think at the moment, um, yeah, at, at the moment things have gone a little, can I go to the second slide? I can. I'm going to rejoin on my computer, so I'm going to hang up on this one and re. There we go. I'm back. Oh, wait. I need to open this first. Okay, Eden, I'm getting there. So if the rest of you are happy, you're welcome to go. I'll go back to slide to the slide for you. You're welcome, Jared. Michaela, and I will help you now as well. So don't go anywhere, Michaela. Um, Eden, I'm getting there. Give me a second. So you said the second slide. You're welcome, Gemma. Okay, it's just taking a while. You're welcome, Nuka. Do some work. I'm watching you, Mr. Randall. You're welcome, Jed. You're welcome, Gabby. Sorry about the technical difference. Kilties. Welcome, guys. You're all amazing. You really, really are. You welcome, Benedict. Welcome, Amy. Okay, 
So I'm going to stop recording now as well because we just saying goodbye. Um, Blaze, they are in MP4. The videos of this section are in MP4 format. Oh, no, no. I've made the Doppler video in MP4 format. That's in the part in the wave sound and light, but any videos that I upload will be MP4 format. OK. Thank you, Catherine. I'm doing great. Just missed you guys lots.